will study about the classes of ATP driven pumps. So basically there are four different types of ATP driven pumps. The first one is P type, the second one is ABC type, third V type and the fourth and last one that is F type of pumps. So the uh, in the very three first P type, ABC type and V type they hydrolyze ATP to perform their function where the, is in the fourth one uh, which is F type ATP pumps they synthesize ATP rather than the hydrolysis means the F type ATP is this. They actually synthesize the ATP rather than hydrolyzing, which is uh, in the above all three cases. So the P type name is derived from the phosphorylation event. It means they phosphorylate themselves in order to perform their function. Whereas in ABC type, ABC stands for ATP binding cassette. So this is nothing but this is ATP binding cassette. And it has a very much important uh, in the sense of clinical. So we can see clinical importance is there in ABC type of pumps. So we will discuss how it is important. And the third one is V type pumps. V type is generally present in vacuoles, in the synaptic vesicles, and in some other cases. And the F1 is actually ATP synthase type, which is present in mitochondria, it is present in chloroplast, and the in bacterial membranes, uh, which perform the aerobic respiration. So it is present in mitochondria as well as in chloroplast and in the bacteria which performs the aerobic respiration so moving to the very first type that is p type uh, pumps actually they phosphorylate themselves in order to perform the function of cellular transport so this is the cytosolic side of the cell and this is outside the cell so actually they are responsible for transport of different types of cations that may be n a plus that may be k plus that may be the divalent calcium ions or the H plus. So there is a phosphate molecule that is attached with this transporter and we can say when ATP is hydrolyzed it will form a molecule of ADP and phosphate group is attached with this uh, pump. So they phosphorylate themselves in order to perform the function of transport. So these molecules are transported across the pump by phosphorylating themselves. Okay. So the uh, P type pumps are important in the muscle cells as well as in neurons so as we know calcium ion regulation or the transport is important in muscle cells in order to contract themselves so calcium ions are present basically inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is nothing but uh, endoplasmic reticulum in muscles so calcium ion needs to be uh, transported into the cytoplasm in order to bind with the subunits of troponin to perform the muscle contraction or to initiate the muscle contraction so this calcium ion uh, transport is uh, regulated by this type of pumps in case of muscles. So it will initiate the process of muscle contraction. Initiate the muscle contraction. So basically we can say the location of such type of uh, such type of transporters in the muscles are nothing but the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is in case of muscles sarcoplasmic reticulum. So moving to the neuronal part, we know the importance of sodium potassium pump in the transport of nerve impulse. So sodium potassium pump or we can say Na plus, K plus, ATPases play an important role in the uh, nerve conduction. So in the process of nerve conduction, there is a movement of sodium potassium ion across the neurolemma or the uh, glass membrane of neuron that is uh, uh, basically represented by and uh, that is actually performed by an ATPase which is Na plus K plus ATPase. So uh, we can see how this is important that is the type of P type pump in the muscle cells and neuronal cells. So moving to the third and very important type of transporter that is ABC type. ABC stands for a, uh, ATP binding cassettes and they are having much important clinical uh, fit. So what is this uh, ABC trans uh, type of transporter is actually they uh, hydrolyze ATP into ATP and inorganic phosphate twice in order to perform their function. So they need two ATP molecules for their transport to, to transport the molecules from inside of a cell to the outside. But this transporter works different, uh, differently in bacterial cells and uh, in eukaryotic cells. So basically they work in a reverse direction. In bacterial cell, they transport the molecules from outside environment inside the cells. Whereas in eukaryotic system, 
it works in reverse direction by transporting the molecule from the cell to the outside environment. So there is a famous example of this MDR protein that is multi-drug resistance protein which is also called as P-glycoprotein. So what is this P-glycoprotein or uh, MDR protein actually uh, do is they transport some molecules or drugs from the um, cytoplasm to the outside environment. So it has much role in the uh, chemotherapy in case of cancer. So when we use some kind of drugs, uh, actually they transport it back to the matrix or the outside the cell. So chemotherapeutic drugs are not effective due to this ATP uh, binding cassette or ABC transporters. And uh, around 40 to 45 percent cases, uh, the drugs developed by us are not functional as a chemotherapeutic agent. So this is a challenging thing, and they, um, uh, this is uh, making a huge uh, hurdle in the battle against the cancer. So in case of malaria, the similar phenomenon occurs that we use a famous drug called uh, chloroquine. So this chloroquine is nothing but an anti-malarial drug and works as the uh, same as the as a anti malaria drugs are transported back to the matrix or outside the cell by this ABC transporters and this is again challenging to treat the malaria in case of some virulent species of plasmodium falciparum. So people facing a lot of problem to treat malaria and malaria kills around 200 million people around the world by the single infection of plasmodium falciparum. So again there is an example of cystic fibrosis where the same case occurred that is responsible for the transport of chlorine. So this is regulated by a protein called CFDR protein and the defective protein synthesis actually now in, uh, hinder with the chloride transport in lungs and will lead to this disorder called cystic fibrosis. So uh, this is also important uh, in the uh, cells like uh, in case of cancer they used to uh, re They used to transfer the drugs that may be chloroquine or chemotherapeutic drugs in cells of cancer or in cells of RBC or the malarial cells. So um, both are equally important and we can see how this is regulating the cancer and the malaria. So there is another example or the third one that is V-type which is present in vacuoles. So there is also a hydrolysis of ATP in order to perform their function ATP into ADP plus PI. So again, this needs a molecule of ATP to hydrolyze and to perform the function from the cytosolic end to the outside. So in order to transport the molecule, they again need a molecule of ATP. So the famous example in case of lysosomes, they actually transport the H plus molecules inside the vacuoles or lysosomes in order to create an acidic environment and to decrease the pH. So pH decreases at the H plus concentration increases inside the vacuole or the lysosomes. So again there is a need of molecule of ATP in order to perform the function as they are they belong to ATP hydrolase, hydrolases and they hydrolyze ATP into ADP and PI. So moving to the next and the last one that is F type ATP is they actually synthesize the ATP rather than hydrolyzing it and it works opposite to the other to, uh, other types of ATP is. So the examples are chloroplast, mitochondria and plasma membrane. So as we can see they form the ATP rather than hydrolyzing it like ADP plus PI will form the ATP molecule and there is an important event that is oxidative phosphorylation that occurs in mitochondria. So the H plus molecule will move and this 3 alpha plus 3 beta subunit of F1 will rotate and this ADP plus PI molecule will form the ATP. So another example is this plasma membrane of bacteria of aerobic bacteria to be more precise. So they again form the ATP by uh, H plus gradient of this H plus concentration. So uh, another example of this is chloroplast where photophosphorylation takes place. Chloroplast where uh, photophosphorylation takes place and the breakdown of this proton gradient will lead to formation of ATP from ADP plus PI. So there is a F1F0 particle in mitochondria which perform the similar function by breakdown of this proton gradient it will form the molecule of ATP. So uh, basically we in this lecture we studied about the type of ATPase that is F type ATPases and uh, P type ATPases, V type ATPases and the ATP binding cassette which plays an important role. So thank you for listening to this lecture and uh, if you have some questions then please comment uh, below and uh, please subscribe this channel to uh, see more videos and let me know if you have some specific topics to me in the video. Thank you.